Looking for a pair of shoes? Check out a couple of sites, don't buy anything. I'll come back to it later. Head over to YouTube. <gasps> Oh no, YouTube has become ShoeTube! Looking to buy a pram because you just got preggers? Check out a couple of sites, don't buy anything, you'll come back to it later. Have a break, go and check out Instagram instead. Oh no, Instagram has become Instapram! Trying to buy your aunt some books for her birthday? Hmm, check out some sites, don't buy anything, you'll come back to it later. Might go and have a quick browse on Facebook though. Uh oh, Facebook has become... Book book! <laughs> Enough of being silly, people don't like that. <laughs> what? Remarketing, retargeting is everywhere. We know that, people know what it is. But what many people don't know is that there are very different ways to use it. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing five ninja remarketing strategies that you can use for your business. And because we love practical stuff, there's gonna be some examples. With examples. <laughs> Now, I'm not gonna be talking about what needs to be in your remarketing ads, that's for another video. We're gonna be talking about the strategies here, so how to use this amazingly powerful tool to make sure that you're seen everywhere and to drive conversions on your website. The principle behind remarketing is simple. You install a tracking pixel on your site, which tells an ad platform when people visit your site. The ad platform then collects all of these website visitors into audiences, which you can advertise against. And then when they're browsing around the rest of the internet, this ad platform can be showing them ads, driving them back to your site. So all of the people that visit your site are basically in one big audience inside the ad platform, but you can segment this audience. So for example, let's say that you're running Facebook retargeting ads. You can tell Facebook that you want to advertise to people who've been on your site more than 30 days ago, but fewer than 60 days ago. Or let's say that you're running some Google remarketing ads on YouTube, for example. You might want to target people who have been onto your shopping basket page, but haven't completed checkout and got to the thank you page yet. So remarketing has really changed the game for a lot of businesses because it essentially allows you a second bite at the cherry. I, someone comes onto your site but doesn't purchase, you have a chance to follow up with them. This is becoming increasingly important as the cost and the competition to get someone onto your site in the first place increases. So what we're seeing and what we'll look at in lots of these examples today is how a business might invest a lot of money to get someone onto the site initially, but then it's a relatively small amount of money to keep advertising to them if they did didn't make the purchase on that first visit. That's why it's one of our favorite paid ad channels. But not all remarketing is equal and there are different ways to use it which is what we're going to look at. Now this first tactic you could call the brand awareness bomb. Now this is the simplest and I guess the most crude remarketing tactic which is basically anybody that comes onto our site we're then going to show ads to. Whilst this kind of blanket approach lacks some of the sophistication and targeting that we're going to look at in some of the other tactics, exposing your website visitors to repeated impressions of your ads does build familiarity and awareness. This repeated exposure makes a difference. Ever notice when you've just bought a new car that you start seeing loads of that car on the road? You trendsetter you. Actually, no. And what's actually happening is that once someone has registered something, i.e. they've been on your site, they've considered buying your product, they are then more likely to recognize when they see it around the internet. And this comes from repeated exposure to the same ads over and over again. Here's the reality. If at some point your customer is gonna choose between you and your competitors, that frequency and repetition of seeing your ads is gonna make a difference because that's gonna build familiarity. And familiarity is one of the most powerful marketing forces. You will then feel like a safer option because you're familiar. Now we will sometimes use this tactic for a website that has lower traffic numbers because in those sorts of cases you tend to need to pull the audience into one group so you can build up enough impressions on the ads. Remarketing tactic two, targeting non-converters. So this is all about targeting people who've been on your site but haven't converted. How rude. So we're starting to get a little bit more sophisticated here. So this is pretty straightforward to understand and pretty straightforward to set up. The goal here is to target people who've been on your site but haven't finished a conversion, whether that's becoming a lead or buying something from you, so that you can advertise and get them back on the site. Pretty straightforward. Everyone who's been on your site gets added to the audience unless they've been on a particular URL like your thank you page. Now, this is more effective because by making this audience more targeted, i.e. only focusing on the people that haven't bought, you can run more targeted ads and still appear relevant. So you can nudge them, hey, why haven't you bought? Here's a voucher code if you wanna buy. 
Here's another reason that you might want to buy. Here's some testimonials from people that became a lead for our business. So because you know that these people have something in common, i.e. they haven't converted, you can optimize the message for that and then it's more likely to resonate with them than just a general kind of brand awareness ad. Hey, we're here, we exist. Now, one of our clients that we use this tactic for makes industrial ball bearings. In fact, some of the world's finest. Now, you might not be thinking that ball bearings are the most sexy products, but here's something that is sexy. Four pound cost per conversion when we advertise to people that have been on their site but haven't converted yet. Now, given that these order sizes can be pretty chunky, that is about as close as we can get to ball bearings being sexy. I know what you're thinking. Wow, ball bearings sound so sexy, I might get in that space. Trust me, you will not compete with them, especially with the ENPPC team on their side. One of the advantages of using this tactic rather than the broad kind of catch-all brand awareness target everyone with the same ad is that we are removing one of the key annoyances with remarketing, which is I've just bought this product and now you're still advertising to me. I can't buy any more, please leave me alone. Well, stay tuned because in our fourth tactic, we're going to look at an example of when you would want to run ads to people who have just bought. But right now, back to remarketing tactic number three, which I'm calling as step two in a content targeted ad campaign. Hey Siri, remind me to think of a better name for that. All right, I've added it to reminders. <laughs> now this can feel a little bit theoretical, so I'm going to talk you through a, a real client example that we're running right now. One of our clients that we're using this for sells premium pet food, and it's a very competitive space to be in because here's the thing, right? If you find a pet food that your dog or cat absolutely loves, you tend to stick around and buy the same thing over and over again. So lots of businesses in this space are willing to invest a lot to get that customer the first time. Now what this means is that Google search ads are pretty expensive, and because the competition is so aggressive, click-through rates on commercial focus terms can be quite low. So for example, let's say you type in premium dog food on Google. Pretty much all of the advertisers on that page are going to be losing money on the first sale. Most of them quite a lot, possibly double the amount that they're actually making. But what they're really trying to do is they're trying to buy you because they know that once you like the product or your dog or cat likes the product, they're going to be, well, it's going to be the dog, isn't it, if you search for dog food, but you're going to be buying over and over again so your lifetime value is going to make it worthwhile and we found that with this client we couldn't really get a better return on investment than spending about 35 pounds per sale and this was on a 27 pound average order value now we weren't really happy with that and we wanted to get that cost per conversion lower so in order to do that we needed cheaper but still really targeted traffic so what we started doing instead was driving ad traffic to content pages for particular searches which we knew the food fixed for example, if your dog has an itchy coat and they're always itching, one of the things that can help that is salmon oil. So we would run ads for search terms like how to stop your dog itching or why is my dog itching to content pages on the site. Now, of course, these keywords are way less competitive than the more commercial intent focus like luxury dog food or premium dog food. So we're paying much less for every click than we would be if we were targeting high commercial intent phrases. But you might be thinking, well, what's the point of just paying to send them through for a blog post? Because if they're going to a blog post, they just want information they don't want to buy. But here's the thing. Not only did that blog post position our client's products, so some people actually just went and bought straight from the blog post, but we then ran retargeting ads on Facebook and Instagram against visitors of that blog post. So think about this. We're driving people to the website from Google search for an informational phrase. We're then retargeting them with ads when they go on their social media later, selling them the products that they've just read about in the article. Because nobody else is running ads for these sorts of informational searches, the click-through rates are massive, over 15%. So for every 100 people that search for how to stop my dog itching, we might get 15 clicks from that. And the cost per click is really, really low as well because they're not very competitive. The retargeting on the back end is super focused because we know all of these people have itchy dogs and our product's gonna be able to help some of them. So when we run remarketing ads to these people from Gmail, from YouTube, from Facebook, from Instagram, we get those conversions much cheaper because we know the problem that we're talking to we know that they know we're the solution and it's a very targeted audience but it's a bit of a backdoor way of getting to them and the great news is that we can generate sales at about one third of the cost if we were just going route a targeting those commercial keywords 
Happy doggos. Tactic number four, repeat purchases. So for businesses where there is a repeat purchase element, running ads to people that have bought a product or even haven't bought a product at about the sort of time that you know they're gonna be repeat purchasing can make a lot of sense. So let's go back to our pet food example. Let's say that we know on average people buy a bag of cat food every 60 days. What we might do is run ads to people that have bought our cat food after about 45 days, starting to nudge them into buying their next bag of cat food. But we might want to take it a step further because if someone came onto our site during their first research phase when they were first looking for this cat food but they didn't buy and they went to a competitor's site and bought there, we might still want to start targeting them with ads for our product after 45 days because we know that on average people buy cat food every 60 days. So if they bought from our competitor the first time and then they start seeing our ads about the time that they're thinking of buying some more, we might still be able to snatch them back and bring them over to our brand. This is gonna be a much smaller audience, particularly if we're only targeting our buyers than a broader campaign. But because it's a smaller audience and because we know that they all have one thing in common, i.e. they bought or they converted, we can run much, much more targeted ads to them, which means we've got a much better chance of resonating with them. Hey, come back, it's time. Now, one client that we run this tactic for is one of the UK's largest health and safety accreditations. We run ads to people that have signed up for their basic membership, encouraging them to upgrade to premium membership. Pretty straightforward. This generates a 6x return on ad spend. But we also run ads to all of their members about the time they're due to renew their membership each year. Hey, your membership's almost up for renewal. Come back to the site and renew. This produces a 5x return on investment. It's a no-brainer. But not only that, this year so far, their members have seen ads for their accreditation over 10 million times at no cost, because remember with remarketing, you don't pay for the impression, you only pay when someone actually clicks on the ad. So all of that brand awareness and that consistent visibility throughout the year comes at no charge. This is why remarketing is so powerful. The people that click on your ads, they already know you, they're already familiar with you but they've been seeing your ads consistently throughout. Remember, familiarity is one of the most powerful forces in marketing. Another client that we use this for is Juki, the makers of the awesome kids music player. So we've been working with Juki for ages. We helped them launch the original music player and sell out of stock everywhere. Um, and when it came time for the Juki 2, the second version of the player, what we did is we ran ads promoting the pre-order phase to their customers and website visitors. Juki second gen pre-orders are completely sold out. You cannot get them anywhere. So something is going okay. Before I give you sales tactic number five, click on the subscribe button to subscribe to this video. Drop us a comment to let us know what's your favorite remarketing strategy? Which of you used? Which do you find to be the most powerful? And of course, if you've got any questions at all, stick them in the comments. We will answer them. As long as they're questions about remarketing, some of the stuff we get is super weird. <laughs> Don't be that person. You know who you are. Okay, tactic number five, sales cycle nudges. This tactic works really well for businesses that have a long sales cycle, i.e. you might generate a lead on your website and then something happens over a period of time before somebody becomes a client. I'm gonna talk you through a live example. This is something that we use at Exposure Ninja. So if you don't already know, one of the ways that we get new clients is through our free website and marketing review. By the way, if you haven't had your free website and marketing review, it's freaking awesome. Basically, you go to ExposureNinja.com forward slash review. You fill in a few questions about your business and your digital marketing goals. One of the team will then record you a 15 minute video, send it over to you by email showing you where your priorities should be in order to hit your sales goals over the next six to 12 months. It's completely free of charge and it's amazing. This is the starting point in our sales process. A number of the people that watch the review become a client of Exposure Ninja. And one of the things that we've done over the years is run a remarketing sequence to people that have had the review. Because we know that on average, it takes people about a month and a half from getting their review to becoming a client of ours. So what we'll do throughout that period is we'll start remarketing ads to them for things like testimonials, case study videos, reasons why they should consider buying from us, 
rather than our competitors. Because we know that throughout this period, they're going through a consideration process. We want our ads to be shown. We want to be consistently visible whenever they log into any social platform or do anything online. Now, the goal of these ads isn't to generate a conversion because they're already going through the sales process. The goal is to get information to people. So we just want them to watch the case study video or we want them to watch the testimonials with our clients saying how amazing we are. We don't actually need them to take an action. So the goal is just kind of nudging them along this sales cycle, keeping them warm, giving them the information that they need. So those are the five ninja remarketing tactics you can use. We looked at the brand awareness bomb. We looked at targeting non-converters. We looked at as step two in a content focused ad campaign. We looked at targeting repeat purchases and we looked at sales cycle nudges. Now I hope you found those useful. Don't forget, click subscribe, like this video and drop us a comment if you've got any questions. Don't forget to request your free marketing review from exposureninja.com forward slash review and also feel free to check out the Exposure Ninja digital marketing podcast on whatever platform you choose to use. See you next time.